some of the possible um, questions you can get on the EQAO grade nine examination. And it's probably going to be, you know, a lot of questions on this. And I, hopefully this will give you some good practice and preparation before the test. Yeah. And so let's get straight into it. So for our first question, it's asking us, what is a simplified form of the expression 2x bracket 2x minus 3 bracket minus 3x bracket x minus 2 and closing bracket? So the first thing I notice here is that we can use distributive property here. So I have a 2x outside of my bracket. So I can distribute it to the 2x inside the bracket here. And I can distribute this 2x to the negative 3 over here. The next thing I see here is I see my negative 3x here. I can see this as one whole term. And I'm going to distribute this to my x here. And then I'm going to distribute it to my negative 2 over here. Okay, so now let's write it out. So, firstly, two, what is 2x times 2x? We know that that is 4x squared. Right? And now what's 2x times negative 3? That is negative 6x. Next, we're going to be combining this negative 3x into this bracket over here. So negative 3x times x is negative 3x squared. And then we have negative 3x times negative 2, which is negative times negative. Remember, it's a positive. So it's plus 6x. All right. So now let's combine like terms here. So if we combine like terms, we put the 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 x's with a degree 2 together. So let's do that. So it will be 4x squared minus 3x squared minus 3x squared. And then we'd have minus 6x plus 6x. And your 6, these minus and a positive like this will cancel out because it's minus 6, positive 6 is nothing. And all you're left with is 4x squared minus 3x squared, which is just x squared. So the answer to this problem is a, which is x squared. So this question is asking one of these tables shows information about a linear relationship between distance and of time. So we're looking for a rela uh, linear relationship here. So we can quickly look at this and figure it out. So let's look at our y values here. So here it's going up for this table, it's going up by 2, and then it's going up by 3. So it's inconsistent, right? Therefore, it's not linear. This one's not linear, so it's not A. Let's look at B here. B is going up by plus 3, right? And then it's going up by plus 5. Again, this one's not linear in that case because it's inconsistent. It's going up by a different value. For C, though, let's look at this. It's going up by... 2, okay, and then it's going up by 4. So this is not our answer either. Let's crack out C. Let's look at D here. D is going up by 3. Okay, and it's going up by 3 again. So this is our correct answer because, look, it's going up by 3, and it's going up by 3 again. So therefore, our answer, our answer is D in this case. This question, we have a cone and a cylinder have the same height and the same radius, right? And if the volume of the cylinder is 162 centimeters cubed, what is the volume of the cone? Okay, so firstly, I'm going to list out both the volume, the formulas for the volume of my cylinder, and the formula for the volume of my cone. The formula for the volume of my cylinder is equal to pi r squared h, and the volume of my cone is basically one third pi r squared h. So we find something, we find something really important here, right? They say that both the, coin, uh, the, the cone and the cylinder have the same height, same radius, right? So we don't have to worry about radius or h in these two cases, right? And pi is a constant, so we don't have to worry about all those either. And the formulas are all practically the same for these, for these two shapes, except for one thing, and that is this one-third over here. So find the volume of my cone, all I have to do is do, is do one-third times the volume of my cylinder, which is 162 centimeters cubed. 
And if we do that, we get 54 centimeters cubed. And therefore, the answer is here. And this is our answer. Okay, so this question asks us, what is the value of negative 7 over 4 squared? So this is a really straightforward question, and to answer it, I'd like to rewrite this negative 7 over 4 squared in another manner. So I'm going to read it like this. I'm going to do um, negative 7 over 4, right, multiplied by negative 7 over 4. Now, if we know the rule for multiplication of fractions, if we do negative 7 times negative 7, we get a positive 49. And then if we do 4 times 4, we get 16. So the answer is 49 over 16. Can we simplify this any further? No, we can't, right? Because the factors of 49 are just 7 and 1, right? Um, so, and 16... It doesn't, ha it doesn't match with any of the factors of 16. So we can just leave it as 49 over 16. And so our answer is this right here. This question it asks us to draw an arrow connecting to each example of financial situations involving either appreciation or depreciation. So to solve this, let's look at our three statements here. The value of a guitar that tripled over 40 years. Hmm. So it says the value tripled over 40 years so the value went up or the value of the guitar went up so therefore um, the financial situation is involving uh, appreciation this would be appreciation so we can just put an arrow towards like that okay the value of a cell phone over time usually the cell phone degrades and it's va it loses its value over time so it would be depreciation okay um, the increasing value of a piece of art over time, it, it clearly states in the question an increasing value. So, therefore, um, this would be a financial situation involving appreciation. Okay, so this question says, uh, what value of x makes the following equation true? So we have negative x over 12 is equal to negative 5 over 4. Now, I think there's a multitude of ways to solve this, right? But for this question, I believe this is the best way to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see... I'm going to make the denominators the same, right? I'm going to multiply. So what do I do to 4 to get to 12 here? I can see that um, uh, that 12 is a multiple of 4. So all I have to do, if I do 4 times 3, I, I will get 12, right? Easily. Now, if I do 5 times 3 here, what would happen? Since I, if, since I multiply the denominator, I also have to multiply the numerator. So what does that give me? This gives me 15. So it'll be 15 over 12 with, with the negative sign here. So my answer would be negative 15 over 12, right? So what is my x value there? My x value is 15. So my answer here is 15. Question here, we have a graph. So the graph below shows the volume of gasoline. So it shows the volume of gasoline in gallons remaining in two machines, right? Two different machines over several hours of continuous operation, right? So we have machine A, which is the line that is made with the dotted, which is dotted actually. And we have machine B, which is the straight line with no dots, just like the dark straight line. And the two variables we're gonna be looking at is we're gonna be looking at the, the volume and the time. So volume is in gallons and time is in hours. So the question is asking us to select two, two, two Two true statements below. Okay, so for our first statement is machine A runs out of gasoline before machine B. Is that true? That is actually true because if we look here, machine A goes to zero um, for gasoline at six hours, right? At six hours, while machine B, while machine B um, runs out of gasoline at eight hours. So machine A runs out of gasoline first. So this is actually true. This is true. Machine A and machine B start with the same as gasoline. So this is a true right now. So we can see that machine A starts with 45 gallons, while machine B starts with 30 gallons. So this is not true. That's not that is not true. So we can we'll put X there if it's not true. 
A third state admitted two machines never have equal volumes of gasoline at the same time is actually false, right? Because they do have the volume at the same time at this point over here. They have the, they have the same volume over there, right? So this is false. And now machine A consumes gasoline at a greater rate than machine B. Now, if you look at machine B here, um, and let's actually look at machine A first, actually. If we look here, it starts at 45 gallons and it ends at 6 hours, right? And machine A has 30 and it ends at 8. So it de machine A is definitely using gasoline up way quicker because it ended earlier, even with more volume. So we know that this is 100% correct. So our two correct answers in this case is that are red. Here we go. This is using... Okay, so this and this are my correct answers. Alright, so that's it for this video. Hope it helps out. Um, thank you so much for watching.